All right, welcome everybody to the April, August 9th, 2018 <laughs> meeting of the Penfield Planning Board. Maybe they can edit that out. Uh, Allison, you want to take the uh, roll call, please? Yes. Hetsky? Here. Bastian? Here. Mauer? Here. Tidings? Here. Burton? Oh, sorry, he's recused. He is he here. He has recused here. himself for, for the matter that's coming up. Uh, here. O'Connor? Here. Thank you. We're good. Okay, we got minutes from uh, July 12th. Hopefully, everybody had a chance to review them. Uh, somebody want to entertain yeah, motion? Yeah, motion to approve. I'll second it. Hetsky? Aye. Bastian? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Tidings? Aye. You said you <coughs> All right, we're going to switch the order up a little bit and take care of McDonald's first while Jim is uh, recused, since he recused himself in that application. So uh, we have the latest submission from McDonald's in front of us. Printed for you up on the screen as well. What they've added uh, to the front of the building, extending to the second brand wall uh, on the side of the building that faces Creek Street, is that limestone treatment that the board discussed last time. Mm -hmm. They also made the cornice the white color that was requested of them, which matches what's in the plaza. Um, basically, tonight's conversation can be to compare this latest drawing um, to the rendering that was provided and discussed at the last meeting which did not have the limestone, um, but it did have a two-tone paint scheme. Um, this. this did not have the cornice on it. Interesting. And that was prior to the cornice being added. Yeah. Do we have the cornice one in there? I thought we had the cornice one somewhere. Well, that's the new one that they just submitted. No, they had it. I saw it. Well. You guys can discuss. We'll find it. Thoughts. That Definitely an improvement. Yeah. You know, in the direction we're going, I believe. Yep. Mm -hmm. Moving in the right direction. All seven, twelve. So, okay. any suggestions to Option one. get this finished up? Any ideas? I think they've done a lot moving as we've asked them to. I think they're Where? agreed, I you know, moving in the right direction. Uh, what about a thought of the two tone paint on the balance of the building where the limestone is not? On the drive -th on the drive through side? I'm thinking the two tone paint ought to go by the wayside myself. Yeah, so you like the new Yes. Like and I went out darker. and checked a couple of other uh, locations throughout the county. It seems like kind of everybody's gotten away from them, actually. So I'm really surprised that they're keeping it at all. Okay. Um, it seems like they're being more flexible with the new, the newer renovations and buildings. So, yeah, I'd like to see it, uh, I think, gone completely if that's possible. Okay, so what about the uh, limestone? You guys cool with it on just those one and a <coughs> eighth facades? That's on the front elevation and then around the uh, not drive through side. Right. Yeah. I mean, with the location of this building being right there, visually and the way it sets. Um, I don't know, maybe they can continue it. That was what we had asked them initially. Oh, yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah, I mean, that would be, I, I think, would it be ideal? Like I say, you know, away from <clears> that, the uh, colored painted bricks and, you know, I mean, do it right. I mean, you know, how often you, you know, have this opportunity. You know, I know uh, what the, the Webster, when they built completely, I believe that was theirs. Um, you know, the styles are all different. I mean, so I think, uh, the opportunity is there for them if you know they can you know, see the way you know, 
with us and uh, make those adjustments, I think it would be great. I'd like to see it so a little you, bit further. So you're asking for the limestone treatment all the way around? Or yeah, all the way around or uh, three sides? I'd be, I'd be happy with three sides. There's a, in the back, the rear elevation has a lot of other, you know, it's more mm -hmm. utility. Yeah. Okay. Purpose. And you might be able to get away with that, you know, the back not being done, but three sides. We're all visual there, you know, because the, it sits out there in the middle of the plaza. Yes, it That's is a very visible building. Yeah. yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure, you know, I mean, they appreciate that. They have to know that that's the first thing anybody sees coming in town, and I'm sure uh, Baytown does, too. I mean, it's, you know. Right. You know, look yeah. at that, you know, you see the big arch, and you see the McDonald's there. So it's very important that it's done right. I think okay. it's got to be done right now. So I'd like to see the limestone on the... Three sides. I agree. Correct. Except for the rear elevation, right? It's one side, not the other. Okay. We're very clear on that. All right. Got that? Uh, I do. Can I interject for just a second? Is that a possibility? Uh, sure. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to add some thoughts. Um, I had a conversation with. Uh, I mean, I've had numerous conversations with McDonald's and Mary Ellen Guan. Obviously, we're taking direction from them. Um, first thing is, uh, Mary Ellen Guan uh, has some concerns with the long-term maintenance of putting the tile or putting the, the limestone on this building. Uh, she personally went around and actually walked the plaza and provided some photos of the condition of some of the uh, veneer that's on the existing plaza now that uh, is, I don't know, it's a year or two old. Um, I can pass this around. But there's some damage to it. And uh, it would add to that in the last, uh, I think she told me within the last 45 days, her building has been hit three times. Um, With vehicles? Yes. Hmm. Vehicles, different, different situations. One as recent as, as this week. So her concern is we go all, or, you know, put this on the, the three, even the three sides of the building, particularly obviously the drive-through side, uh, you know, now the cost of that. And, and this just has happened in the last 45 days, but she goes, this is sort of a, and I don't know why, uh, but it's sort of an ongoing issue with, with this site. And uh, again, I can't explain it, but. So, you know, she's looking at it as the, as the owner of this facility and saying, well, not, you know, not only do I have to fix or repair a brick, now I've got to replace this uh, limestone veneer on, in addition to that. So that, that's her main concern is, is well, A, is the, the, the initial cost of it, but then the, the, the ongoing cost of it. Um, so the, how we came up with this, what we're proposing here is that between Branwall and Branwall, sort of, was a good starting point and a good ending point and the whole front side of that is in a landscaped area so she doesn't have to worry about uh you know getting hit with a snowblower or somebody whacking it with a metal shovel or whatever it may be uh the only exposure she has is just the uh the piece on the non drive through side on the empire boulevard side that's 10 feet long or something um, but I think you can see in the pictures that clearly, you know, whether whether some of those are getting hit with snowblowers or what they're getting hit with, it, it certainly creates a, a maintenance thing that is, is just more operating costs for her. Um, so, you know, we're sort of have presented this tonight as, uh, you know, speaking for McDonald's that this is sort of their compromise of what they're willing to do um, with understanding those, those circumstances, uh, you know, understanding the the initial cost of installing it and then the potential ongoing cost. Um, you know, we've tried to, and again, I think just having, building these brand walls, and you may, uh, it, from the prior elevations, we had run that stone all the way down to the uh, sidewalk surface. And after actually spending a little more time looking at the plaza, really all the plaza, there's in no situation is there stone that runs down to the sidewalk, but it stops at the top of that limestone veneer. So that's why initially we were talking about adding that just to the brand walls. And then we said, well, if we've got it on both brand walls, let's extend it in between. And again, when people pull into the driveway, you know, they're looking at the McDonald's, they're pointing in the plaza and looking at the McDonald's, they're seeing that, you know, that design that is consistent with the plaza. And again, we've sort of wrapped that around the drive-through side. Um, 
to be very frank, I don't know that McDonald's, you know, if, if I mean, you certainly can issue an approval with, on this tonight saying that it, it's going to be required on three sides. That's certainly, if that's the board's preference, um, but I don't know where it goes from there. Um, so, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Randy. Bill. Okay, based on that, um, anybody have a revised opinion? Uh, my only comment was looking at those photos, I think some of that was initial workmanship issues with the install. Not to say that some damage could occur, but I think part of those were um, initial construction issues. Okay. Terry? Um, I'm sure it's a concern. I mean, you know, I mean, if that's the case, and people are run into it, I'd like to probably, uh, I'd probably like to go and take a look at it again, see it for myself, and see, you know, yeah, how, how that stuff could have occurred. I mean, to me, if they're running into it with cars or snow blowers or whatever, I mean, I'm sure, you know, the, uh, the paint. Yeah. It's gonna get chipped to them and stuff. Yeah. I mean, so it's gonna hit. You know, whether or not the expenses as much, maybe not. You know, I agree with them right. there, but <clears throat> I'm probably gonna take a look at it and see, check it out there. And think about a little bit more. Yeah, it's hard to tell how they got damaged through these photos. Most of them seem to be very low to the ground, like at ground level. I mean, mm -hmm. is it a, if, I don't know, my stone breakdown is. You know, I don't. This stuff break down easy. Usually, chip away or stuff like that. I don't know. Well, I don't know if this is real limestone or limestone yeah. veneer. veneer. I yeah. 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 I'd like to go out and take a look at this damage. I mean, I have no idea how this could occur unless it was just a, a product right. problem to yeah. begin with or if workmanship. Um, no matter what, though, if she gets hit, if the McDonald's gets hit, then uh, there's going to be a repair made, whether it's limestone or brick. Correct. Okay. We can so. also reach out to the plaza owner as well, if you'd like, okay. if they have any information on it. Or yes. Or updates on because part of the plaza has been built for a number of years now, so they may have some information or records of what's taking place over time. All right, so we want to uh, Are you still supportive of three sides, though. I'm, I'm still on three sides. Yeah, I'm good with three sides. Okay, consensus is still three sides, but taking a look at yeah. Okay. Now, do we want to issue an approval for three sides with the potential to modify that, or? Uh, I would or say if you're taking the time to review yeah. the maintenance and longevity <coughs> of that of that material, uh, hold off on an approval. If okay. it comes back to this, then you have this drawing to work <coughs> off of and, and act on this rather. Um, Fair point. Then an, uh, another revised drawing. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Do we need to take any? We don't have to take any action on that. No. We'll uh, come back to that in September. Okay. All right. And we'll contact. Uh, we'll get that message to the applicant, and uh, we'll reach out to the plaza managers as well. And we will welcome Mr. Burton back to the proceedings. Would you like to do a panorama trail or? Um, let's do. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Our other action item is at Panora at 625 Panorama Trail. There are three existing office buildings. Uh, you can go Google if it's easier. Oh, actually, hit connect. It should go back if I'm lucky. Uh, three existing office buildings um, in Panorama, off Panorama Trail behind M&T Bank. Uh, what you should have what you should have received um, in your drop is renderings of what the new building is proposed. 
uh, for facade updates. It includes new siding, um, cultured stone, a couple building enhancements, as well as a new entranceway and new roofing. Um, maybe we can pull up that. So there's the existing buildings now. Pretty simple in their nature. And then, Mike, if you could go to the action item folder where McDonald's was. Go back a couple. And uh, go down to the bottom. And color elevations. Thank you. So on this is a image of what the building would look like. There's multiple renderings in there. Here, there is a. You guys do have a handout of that as well. Here, in your packets. Okay. Open up the conversation. So is that? Make sure there's. Um, it's a gray siding material, um, kind of like it. a shape siding. Yep. They, do you guys have the materials tonight? You want to come up and show those to the board? Okay. Good evening. I'm Dave Simonetti with my brother Dan Simonetti. And these are the products that are intended to be used right here. On the, all the cultured stone would be a version of this. Yep. Mm -hmm. On the bottom, all three, all three buildings are virtually identical. Okay. And so the stone that would be used on all three buildings would be the same. The <coughs> siding on the fronts of the building and a little bit on some of the sides of the building would be uh, of the sh cedar shake shingle uh, style. Vertical or horizontal? Oh, vertical. Just like this. Just like this. Okay. Yeah. okay. What about on the ends? And then on the ends, what you see there, now that right now, if you looked on your other picture or you saw, I, I noticed that you can see it when you had the first description. Those are squared on the top now. Please. Okay, they used to be at an angle. So we're going we're gonna, to uh, take that top point, lower it a little bit, and then square those off. Um, the two sides. Back to the photo. Just so everybody knows. Yep. Yeah, so so that, about, and then follow that. The, the tower. The, the, the stair towers. If you go back all the way to there, see how the stair see towers the, are on an angle? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So that is going to go away now, and it's going to look like the new picture where it shows it as a square okay. uh, flat top. Okay. And then the two the two ends will be uh, all stone all the way up. These. Yep. The same, be stone all same stone. Same stone. Mm -hmm. Same stone. All right. So this what's shown here in black would be that stone. The all stone. stone. Yep. Yeah. And what's what that about would be this the drive. material? That, that would be the drive. It's going to be a drive, it, and it's on your other. Um, uh, there's another page there with all the the actual materials. This is the stair tower. Yes. Mm -hmm. Synthetic stucco. Same color. Okay. And at the yeah, charcoal blend um, roof paper, we're going to be removing all the existing paper and uh, putting in a, a gray tone. Black gray blend. Ooh. Sorry. All right. That. Anybody? I think they're nice good to me. I think yeah. they're nice improvements. I think the colors are uh, uh, consistent with mm -hmm. what everybody's going for today. Yeah. yeah. The light and dark grays and the darker roofs. And right. And just to mention it, go ahead. You were, I well, think you were going to say the same uh, thing. There's a little addition at the front there. Um, at times of the year, uh, we have like an ice uh, problem coming out. and. The existing wall of glass is a flat panel right now. We're thinking of putting an exterior uh, canopy with uh, a stone column, uh, ephus on the face. The sides would be open, but there'll be a full roof on top of it. It's probably about eight foot wide and about six to seven feet deep, just enough to uh, give it some 
detail, but yet uh, protect the people when they're walking out. Do you have Some a diagram cover. or a rendering of this? It's on there. Well, if you could see yeah. that square. You're talking yes. 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 Yeah. Right yeah. It'll be open on the side. It'll be held up by two columns. Instead of hanging uh, just mm -hmm. an awning type yeah, overhang, um, it'll be supported by two columns with uh, EFIS and some uh, stonework. And again, it'll be the bottom. The bottom, as you can see, it'll be the same stone. And then it's not, it's not a very high The upper structure. windows will remain the same. The two side windows will remain the same. Yeah. The door stays in its same location. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be a, a bump out just a enough. Uh, All right. Okay. Um, are there any window replacements? As part of this project, mm -hmm. if there are, it's going to be uh, due to uh, probably broken seal or something yeah. like that. Our but glass uh, needs to be really yeah, uh, the windows will be remain the same. We are going to case them all though with a uh, a three and a half inch vinyl um, casing on it, just to make them a little little heftier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Anybody have any issues? Any improvement? No. Anybody want to move it? I'll move to approve. Second. Can I have a Hetsky? Aye. Bastian? Aye. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Tidings? Aye. Right. When are you going to do it? Soon. Soon. <laughs> Just got to get, get, get a building uh, permit. Done by Labor Day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Thank you. you appreciate it. it. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. All right. Minutes. Trying to get back on script, go to our tabled applications for the evening. Uh, the first three listed require no action by the board. That takes us to, um, we're going to jump to the Wickham Farms application. Um, the board at its previous meeting directed staff to draft an approval resolution. That has been provided. Uh, in the meantime, we also did receive public comments from a neighbor on Edenfield. Um, couple things I, I would just like to address out of that. Um, the, the, the comments brought up a number of things that the board's been reviewing. Uh, one was Seeker that is still, that we've done this as, this is being reviewed as an unlisted action, therefore an EAF has been provided uh, for the board, has been reviewed by the board, so that process is underway. It is not a type two, as the comments alluded to. Um, other items that came in uh, of concern were for noise, lighting, buffers, parking, etc. Um, I'd just like to point out that the parking was a, was reviewed as a grade and fill permit by the town board for the existing UPIC operations that Wickham Farms offers on the site. Um, this has been a, a long-term goal for Wickham Farms in order to get street parking off of Sweets Corners Road and into a uh, consolidated location off the road so that's no longer an issue of in the past, there have been cars parked on both sides of that road, and it becomes very um, challenging to drive through. So the parking lot is underway currently under a grade and fill permit that was approved by the town <coughs> board. Um, other items that were brought up with lighting and noise, um, the applicant did provide a written response to all of these concerns that were brought up in the, the comments from the resident. Uh, we see that noise is being addressed with some additional buffer areas and closing the apple cannons that are proposed within the within the farm. Um, other items are with the lighting. It's a typically they're closing at 9 or 8 p.m. Um, lights are only on after that for staffing and for security purposes, just to make sure everyone can leave the facility safely. Um, so we also had things were touched on. The hayride route was rerouted to be further away from the neighbors on Edenfield. So they have tried to, again, think of the neighbors as they've been planning out the facility. Um, kind of the bulk of it. Um, they did have some questions about, you know, our process as well in terms of making the plans accessible to the public. Just wanted to review for the public that these plans for all of our projects come up when the agenda is posted on the website, which is always the Friday before the meeting. Uh, leading up to that, we have postcards and signpostings that go on the property and people call 
and ask for a copy of the plan and we do accommodate that. And this resident uh, went through that system to receive a copy of the plan before it was posted on the website because our process is that the agenda doesn't get posted until the Friday before. So just to clear up any issues with um, transparency from our review process, that is the process that we do. Um, so, having said that, are there any items the board would still like to discuss uh, for this application? You had some minor revisions. I had some mostly. revisions. I sent them to Zach. He incorporated them into the uh, draft resolution. Mm -hmm. I went through the EIF. Everything appears to be in order. Okay. Anybody else have any concerns? Okay. No. <clears throat> At this time, I'd, I'd make a motion that we approve the EAF. I'll second. Okay. Okay. Um, Hetsky? Aye. Bastian? Aye. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Tidings? Aye. All right. Now I'd like to make a motion to approve the application subject to the conditions stated in the draft resolution. I'll second. Aye. Aye. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Tidings? Aye. Good. All right. Where are they? In the back? We'll be in touch for the uh, post approval process. Okay? Have a good night. All right. Uh, we so we have uh, two minutes. We do. We have another table, to table item for the evening, but it would probably be best for the board to discuss that after the public hearing to allow you more time to review the changes and revisions that have been submitted by the applicant. Yeah. So, to recess until. Give me an opportunity to see another public hearing, too. <laughs> that, <laughs> I, 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 I Not every day that you get to do that. <laughs> All right, we will recess or reconvene in about two minutes for the public hearing. Evening, everyone, and welcome to the August 9th, 2018 meeting of the Penfield Planning Board. We will begin the meeting with Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. All right, thank you everyone for coming. We have one item on our agenda tonight. The way our process works, the applicant will uh, present their idea to the board. Uh, the board will ask questions uh, as we see fit of the applicant, and then we open it up to the audience to ask any questions and provide any concerns or comments that you may have. This is a great opportunity for public input and it's uh, the main purpose of the public hearing. <coughs> so with that, uh, one other thing, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices. And uh, if you do come up and speak, please stand at the podium, state your name and address for the record and address the board, not the applicant. With that, Zach, could you please read our agenda item? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Application number one, Delta Sonic Car Wash Systems Incorporated, 570 Delaware Avenue, Buffalo, New York, 14202, request under Chapter 250, Articles 12-12.2 and 13-13.2 of the Code of the Town of Penfield for preliminary final site plan approval and an expansion to an existing conditional use permit for a new building and outdoor vacuums with associated site improvements on a 4.88 acre property located at 1773 and 1841 Empire Boulevard. The properties are now or formerly owned by Delta Sonic Car Wash Systems Incorporated and Zone GB. Application number 18P-0025, SBL numbers 093.15-1-65 and 093.15-1-64.1. Good evening, Chairman, members of the board. Matthew Oates with Delta Sonic. With me this evening as well is Mike Yount, the Delta Sonic Director of Construction 
and Jeremy Brooks, an in-house engineer with Delta Sonic as well. We are requesting site plan approval and a modification to the previously issued conditional use permit that allowed for the auto use. We are proposing a redevelopment of the existing Delta Sonic at 1841 Empire Boulevard. And as part of this, we have purchased the property directly to the south, which is the uh, Bay Dry Cleaners property, which is 1773 Empire Boulevard. So we are incorporating that into the Delta Sonic property. As we go through the process, if the board um, issues an approval for the project, we would then go through the subdivision process to just combine that all into a single tax lot. Just wanted to let the board know we do have plans to make it all one tax parcel. So just to not, well, I'm going to interrupt. Uh, the proposed anti-subdivision uh, is not part of this application? We hadn't made a formal subdivision application yet. It's two lots combining in the one. I don't know if that's an administrative process with the town, honestly, if there's a public hearing necessary. The property line existing kind of runs to here and then over to here. We just typically with subdivisions, once we get the approval, we've gotten where there are conditions and then we would just run sure. through that process. Okay. I um, just wanted to clarify that. Thanks. Didn't mean to. No, and as I'm going off. through, please feel free to interrupt me. I sometimes can go off and talk a little long. <laughs> The proposed redevelopment is allowing us to add additional uses to the property and to also improve the overall traffic circulation and the drive through. We are proposing to add exterior vacuums along the front of the property near Empire Boulevard and then on the southern portion of the property. We are also proposing. Hey Matt, there's a microphone, uh, I believe, right there. Okay. If you okay. step away, if you don't mind using that, sure. so that the Absolutely. fans at home can not hear a what problem. You say. <laughs> After for the exterior vacuums, we are also proposing an interior <coughs> vacuum building on the south portion of the property. In addition, we are going to be extending the third entering lane for the car wash all the way back to the entrance here. So currently, there's two lanes that run back, we're going to be adding a third, which will allow for additional stacking for the car wash. In addition, we are going to be replacing our employee pay booths here in our XPT lanes, which are for the monthly people who come through. You have a tag on your car for that. And also, we are going to be replacing the prep hut where the car gets pre-sprayed by what we call the robots. Currently, there's a single booth there. We're going to be increasing it to two booths, which will allow for us to get more vehicles through the car wash at a quicker pace because you can get two sprayed down and then you can get the cars in just faster. It lets us service more vehicles, which helps to reduce the stack. As part of it, we're going to be modifying the front of the car wash and how it exits and how it gets kind of serviced through the property. Currently, the drying lanes are in this location here. Come out of the car wash, get dried, and then you kind of head into the exit lane. We are looking to move the drying lanes to this section of the property. So if you come out of the car wash, you then turn right to dry, and then you can either exit the property onto Empire Boulevard here, or then use the exterior vacuums here, or enter and use the interior vacuums. All of our exterior vacuums, they are free to use, whether you've come and purchased anything from us, you just want to come and use it. Typically, we find most people will go through the car wash, then they'll come and use the exterior vacuums. The interior vacuum building is currently going to be for our monthly customers that would just be an additional service you would get by purchasing the monthly plan with us so during inclement weather whether it's in the winter time whether it's raining out you'll be able to go inside the building and do your vacuuming of the car if you so choose generally we find people spend about 15 to 30 to 45 minutes actually at the vacuum stations they kind of go in they park a lot of times they'll redry their car over there, then they go through, they take out the garbage, they spend a lot of time vacuuming. I know one of the town comments had mentioned traffic conflicts in this area. Typically, you'll only see like probably five, 10, maybe 15 cars backing up in an hour because they stay so long there. So it's not a large conflict with the number of cars you see coming out of the gas canopy is significantly more than any cars that would be backing up from that area. Uh, the other thing with traffic circulation that helps with by pushing the drying lanes to this side, we're taking the cars coming out of the car wash and we're moving them away from the gas canopy. And we're kind of keeping this exit lane here mainly for customers who have used our store, have used our interior detailing or gas. And all the car wash will be able to exit out this location. 
we are closing the middle curb cut that sits right here as part of the project, so there will be one less curb cut on Empire Boulevard. In addition with some of the town comments in regards to the drainage, we had Costich do the SWIP report. We are providing additional underground detention on the site in this location here along with a water quality device. We are reducing the overall stormwater discharge for the site between 21% for the one year storm and 56% for the 100 year storm and then we are meeting all the water quality requirements of the DEC. We also submitted a noise study as part of the application. The noise study looked at four different points on the property, two along the back side and then two on the side. Based upon the information provided in the study, the actual noise in the back based upon the mitigation we are going to be proposing as part of the project, which is the extension of the six foot sound barrier. There's already the fence existing that's in this area. We're going to be extending it down to here. The actual noise is projected to be less along the back. It will be higher in this area, but that was adjacent to a commercial property. Um, so we didn't look at specifically mitigating for the adjacent commercial property. The noise ordinance specifically was more looking at dwellings. That said, to provide additional mitigation, we could extend some landscaping. We weren't necessarily looking to bring the whole six foot sound barrier all the way down there, but maybe we could do some landscaping that would look visually nicer in that area, something we, we could look at doing. In regards to the architecture for the building, this is the proposed architecture. Um, we're looking at mainly a glass structure <coughs> for the building. We think it's really, it's open, it's airy, it'll bring in a lot of natural light. We think it's really good for what we're proposing inside. And then for the exterior vacuums, um, provided just prior to the meeting pictures of the vacuums that we are proposing that have actually been installed at other locations. We propose them to be very minimal. We don't try to create a large blocking structure up front. We try to keep them as minimal as possible so you can see through them. There's still visibility from the road onto our site. They don't block people from being able to see out on the road. So that's kind of why we do that. That's everything. So at this point, <coughs> open it up to questions for the board and public. Okay. Don't you want to start um, yeah, out? I've got a few questions and comments. Um, probably, in my opinion, one of your biggest issues is going to be noise generation from the vacuum stations. And you have a total of 32, 18 outside, 14 on the inside. How many other uh, Delta Sonics in Western New York have that many vacuum stations? For exterior, we have close to those same numbers at our East Main Street location. We have received approval to extend out the locations at the Grease and add in another six. And this will be the first facility in Western New York that actually gets the interior vacuum buildings. We are currently looking at other locations to add it. Um, we are currently under construction in Henrietta to build an additional large building in the back to do it. But we're thinking this would probably be the first one that would get completed. It is something that has changed in the industry and it's adding additional services for customers. So having the exterior vacuums, also having the number, as I said, people aren't coming there and say spending four minutes, five minutes, so there's a high turnover. When you have people who are there for 25, 30, 40 minutes, having the extra stations there allows more customers to use it. We don't wanna, they're free, so we don't wanna have to set up where you have to put in quarters and it times you when you have to leave, have an employee sitting there, well, you've been here 10 minutes, you have to go. We want the customers to be able to use them as they see fit, but we want to provide as much as we can for the customers. So they're not coming there and being like, well, I can't use this because it's never open. So that's why okay. we are doing that. So how many, <clears throat> you said East Main and Greece are going to have the same number of East outside? Main Street should have approximately the same number. I can't answer the exact number off the top okay. of my head. And Greece, they're currently along Ridge Road in front. And we are going to be doing expansion there that adds another four or five on what would be the east side of that site, which I believe will then get up to probably 16 to 18 there. In Arondicoit, we have approval to add and redo that site, taking into the OTB, which where I believe we're adding in 19 exterior vacuums at the Arondicoit site. So for exterior, this is the number we look for, and we try to honestly get as many as we can. If there was more available space, we'd probably look at trying to add more. Okay. 
the um, <clears throat> for the outdoor stations, uh, is each station does it have its own vacuum system, or is it more like a central vac for uh, industry where the, there's the motor is centralized, and then each station has its own hose, but each station doesn't have its <clears throat> own individual motor. So there'll be the turbines as we refer to them located here. Okay. And then they're hooked up to the overall system, so then each system is operating off of that same motor system. So there's there and then there over there. So there'll be two actual sections where there are motors for the okay. exterior vacuums. Now I re read through the uh, noise study a couple times. I have to admit it's not real easy to follow. Um, for the interior vacuum systems, uh, what's going to be the noise level? Say worst case, where the all 14 are running? Um, well, with, that, with everything we're proposing in the mitigation, the noise, I can't tell you off the top of my head what the specific decibel levels are. What I can tell you from the final report is the noise levels with extending the barrier in the back goes down at those two locations. And I believe it went up a total of 17 decibels here. It didn't break out what just the interior vacuums would generate if you took out the rest okay. of the noise. <clears throat> and what it assumes also is both doors are open because it's a, it's a closed building, but the noise study just makes the assumption that both the front and back door are wide open for it. But in inclement weather, they're probably going to be closed? In inclement weather, yes, they would be closed. If it's raining out, they'd be closed. Typically, we'd want it to be closed because we're actually setting it up where not anyone can go in. It would be, you would have to have your member so it scan your tag mm -hmm. on your car for that. Okay. And from what I could find out from the study is that uh, probably the loudest location you have is going to be uh, point number one. And that's next to the Royal Dynasty? That, yes, that is going to be okay. the loudest location, yes. And it's going to be 18 or 20 decibels higher than background or what Correct. it is today? Ex existing, yes. That would, that would be higher, yes. Do you know what it is today? Uh, I can tell you, yes. The current decibel today, <clears throat> highest is 64.5 with background at the weekday p.m., and it is going to go up to 79.9, it looks like, on the daytime. That would be table three. Okay, so if I'm walking into the Royal Dynasty, I've got 80 decibels, a lawnmower next to me, practically. At this, at this specific yes. point, but yeah. as you, when you're walking into the Royal Dynasty over here, you don't have any decibels. We didn't measure it at their okay. entrance door. Okay. All right, <clears throat> there'll be probably more questions uh, on the letter for noise. Um, you want to add an auto repair service. What kind of? Uh... No, what, we're, what we have is we already have a conditional use permit that's required. So an auto repair service requires an additional conditional use permit. We're going to be adding in this property, so we have to expand. Our, we have to redo the conditional use permit. We're adding the vacuums. Correct me if I'm wrong. Say we were just a retail building, a commercial place wanted to add exterior vacuums. Would that need a conditional use permit for auto repair or are we just modifying it because we already have it because it's the Delta Sonic? Uh, no, you would still need one you would for still that need use. For the, out just for the vacuums? Okay. So that's, we're not auto repair. Auto repair is the only conditional use then. We're just adding the vacuums to it. Okay. We already have that conditional use. Um, another question I have is the pay booths. You said you're going to replace a, a, a person at a pay booth. They're all going to be automated? No, nope, we'll still have a person back oh, okay. there. We're just replacing the equipment that's back there. Some are automated for our monthly. Right. So when you come through, right. but besides that, it, the rest of it, we'll still have a person okay. back there. Okay. That's all. And then we'll still have the, everyone else working as well like it, like it normally is. Okay. Thank you. Other board members? Questions? Uh, yeah. I had a question on with the expansion um, for traffic. Um, entering and leaving the site, what do you anticipate? So we anticipate that the traffic will be entering at this location mm -hmm. or at this location. Um, the majority of the traffic today exits at this location. We're expecting to take the majority of the car wash traffic out of the exiting from here and have it now exiting at the subtly because of the way the drying booths are set up. We're also setting this up for one-way traffic coming down. We're not looking to add cross traffic 
going back in that direction. So that's what we're, we're expecting. And what do you see as, I guess, a net increase of volume on that site? If, you know, you could predict. I'm sure you got some idea. It's what not, I don't know the specific numbers because I do more of the engineering, but what I do mm -hmm. know is it's not necessarily adding additional customers. It's helping to retain customers and then to add to the customer experience and keep them on our sites for longer. So there are other car washes and places in the area that also now offer free vacuums as well, competitors mm -hmm. of ours. Our hope is you come, you get your car washed, you get your interior done, your oil change done, you stop in at Dunkin' Donuts, get a coffee, get gas. If you want to, you vacuum your car while you're there, then you come in when you're done, you grab something, just overall just trying to keep customers on our site for longer and provide a better experience. Okay, and then of course with the increased area and increased queuing, you have the capacity for people to be on site for a longer period of time. Yes, we do. Okay. Thank you. Can you describe the use of the interior building just one more time for me? Is that also free? Is the interior building, pay? it's, is you don't pay to use it each time. It's just an added benefit to the monthly car wash service. So we sell a monthly pass. You could go through there five times a day mm -hmm. if you wanted to. With that, you can then go also use the interior okay. vacuums as well. And it's set up to enter in from the front and then you exit out. And it's the rear. only accessible to monthly. Right, right now it people. is. It is only accessible to so monthly. If you don't people. have a monthly pass, you're. That's what the current business model is one. for. Is for would you? Yes. Okay. So if you come through the car wash now, the way it's set up right now, you spend a lot of time there. We appreciate that. And uh, and you're busy all the time. I just wonder how you can handle all the traffic in there. I mean, and I like staying there, but. When you come out of the car wash now, so you have to drive around back onto the other adjacent property where the new building is going to be? To get so, if you, so if you come out of the car wash here, right. you would come out, and then you would just make a right-hand turn, and you would get dried off at one of these drying stations. And then when you're done, you can either exit the property, <coughs> could use one of these vacuums, or come through to the interior, and then exit out. What about when you extend the, uh, the lanes around the back? When you guys do the both add the properties together, there's not going to be any roadway coming up the back entrance the, there. The only only here is in um, a bypass lane. If say someone has to get out, right. the car wash breaks down and we have to get people out of the right. stack. So this is just to get people out. That's not an entrance into the car wash. So I've been stuck in this the stack as you call it yeah. yeah it's and our and our hope is by doing the two cars at one time it helps to speed up getting cars to the car wash entrance itself so we can get more cars into that which then will help to clear the stack a little bit more this is going to be comparable uh how's this compared to henrietta the renovations out there i've been out there too henrietta has a much larger piece of property that was available on the corner. It's getting the same services and things we've done there, we're also doing here. We're trying to look at improving the stack, getting the interior vacuums, getting exterior vacuums, things like that. So every site, I can tell you, continuously gets evaluated on like a weekly basis. What can we do? How do we make the customer experience better? Everything that really gets done and how we design the sites and look at them they really want to make like they want the customer experience to be good. If you come here and you have just an awful experience, you're not going to come back and we've lost your business forever. And that's not what we want. We want to make it better. We also want you can come here and you don't have to go somewhere else to say get a vacuum done or, or to have your interior done, things like that. We want to try to make it an all inclusive spot. Get your gas, get your car washed, vacuum it out if you please. And I like the expansion part of it. You know, now they got the property adjacent, I just I can see the increase of the traffic and things like when you get in there, like I say, once you come around the side of the building, you know, you're stuck. I mean, you're not going to really can't get out. You when know, you come so around now. the side, 
you know, you come into the entrance right now, presently, if you drive in there. Once you get around the corner of the building, Would if there's, here? yeah, if they're stacking up, yep. you're in for the long haul. <clears throat> yes. So enjoy it. So, I mean, if you, you don't have somebody to bring out a cup of coffee, you will be sitting there for a while. You know, and, it, but, you know, I mean, that's why I, I like the expansion. I got that property. That's a good point. Yep. You know, and, uh, you know, even though with, you know, Panorama Trail, the same thing down there, you know, you know, they're just, you know, they're deadlocked there and needing more yeah, room. So I'm, it is, and, I'm that, and that's why I look at it. I'm afraid to think they keep building on as, you know, instead of expanding more. Because, yeah, there's no room to really, I mean, if you want to get out there after, you know, have coffee, you usually have to park up in front there where the vacuum is, the one vacuum. That's where I leave my car because yeah, like there's no room right in front. So I park up along the front there where the vacuum is. That's where people leave their cars. Yep. You know. So it's going to be interesting. But, you know, I mean, you guys do a great job. Um, I just hopefully uh, it's not going to back things down more. That's not that. That honestly, that's not our hope, and our and our hope was to, with trying to get, and shift the car wash, traffic over to that side was to actually open up, the property a little bit more, take out some of the, the traffic conflicts that exist because you had all of, the drive and exiting traffic in this direction, coming in with the gas, so everyone was basically exiting there, so we we felt by pushing it over. It, it would help. And that's the direction you think is the best way to go with more vacuum cleaners as opposed to any other maybe uh, uh, site issues? Yes, because there, there's really no, th this we've looked at it many times and we're kind of with the way it's set up and everything there, there's really n not a lot else that we can, we can really do. We've kind of took, we took the stack and we're able to add in that third lane. We were able to expand the prep hut out. So that really does get us a lot more Capacity. I know it doesn't doesn't sound like much, but it really does actually help to get more capacity and get cars through there faster. We we look at continuously also modifying how things work inside. Typically, you would get your rain X, your body gloss, your tires done, all done at the drying station. So that would slow things down at the drying station. We're looking to try to be able to speed things up there as well to be able to process cars through there quicker. So we're looking at some places that trying to put that inside and you actually get that done as you're going through the tunnel so it doesn't take extra time while you're getting dried off to get that. So that helps get more cars dried quicker, helps to push through more cars there and keep cars from backing up. So we're always looking at ways to improve it, to make it better and to try to, in the end, make it a better customer experience. So your employees will still be using this new facility with the vacuum cleaners, right? As the people are waiting in the waiting room at the main building your employees will be taking the cars over there? Or the nope, the, this is all self-service. All self-service, okay. Everything in there, the interiors and the exteriors, it's all self-service. Our employees will still be doing the regular interiors and everything else, but yeah, these vacuums are all self-service. Okay, all right, we, uh, as far as uh, any uh, exterior work, you're just gonna keep the fences, no uh, landscaping or anything like that? No, we have, we have extra landscaping that we're proposing on this lot, we're doing additional landscaping up front as well we're proposing some additional landscaping back here and throughout the site so there, we, there was landscaping that was submitted as part of it so we are looking to do additional landscaping okay any other questions from the board yeah i have one question have you considered uh, reducing the number of exterior vacuum places uh, at the southeast end of the site to avoid a conflict with people that are in those last one or two uh, exterior vacuum uh, sites from backing up into cars that are exiting out of the site that just got dried off? So over yep. here, no, yep. it's just the way we were looking at it as you're coming in, you still have, you have the room back over and here to back up. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to. I'd like to see a, a uh, vehicle a, turning. A, well, uh, I'd like to see a turning plan yeah, there yeah. with some with some some traffic calming um, elements in there that yep. could direct people to do that or or might identify a conflict. Yeah, we could do that, and we can also show how the ve the vehicle backing up as well, how the vehicle backing up turns, and how exiting goes out as well. Yeah, we can definitely show that. Okay. Anyone in the audience like to comment on this application? Okay. Any other questions from the board? No. 
much. Very nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, do you so have would any be the final comments. Uh, uh, no. Well, so what's the next, next step? The next step in the process. We uh, break from this. Okay. We convene back at the table in the back of the room. Okay. Perfect. Uh, discuss. Okay. What you presented, we will issue you a tabling resolution. Okay. And uh, probably have some questions and some further requests for information. Okay. And take it from there. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And we will call this hearing closed. Concerned with um, exterior noise, obviously. Noise, noise carrying off projects the outside the building. And you got 80 Ocean decibels. Would be concerned with the noise. 80 decibels is actually mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, it's, that's a little, yeah. that's a little loud. <coughs> I can ask for noise levels of interior that may impact exterior. Okay. How's that? that? Go ahead. Nope, that's all I got. The letter that was sent to staff, you guys sent to us, to the planning board, the few questions on the noise. Which one? Notice oh, the comments. PRC memo. There you go, PRC Yes, memo. sorry, thank you. you can, yeah. can we incorporate those questions into the tabling resolution? Yes, as part of the tabling resolution, I was going to add, um, we are looking for responses to the PRC memo still, <laughs> along with the revised plans, okay. plus the questions from tonight. We can emphasize those questions, though, in the tabling resolution if you'd like. Okay. Um, that's kind of where we're at with that one right now. I, I'd like them to seriously consider continuing that sound barrier fence or wall up to the front of the property. Because yeah, I think that's, that's not site. cool to do to the Royal <coughs> I mean, I get the fact they're a commercial building, but you got people walking in there on a Sunday afternoon, it's going to be oh, yeah. it's going to be real loud. I think you might have a potential line of sight issue if you're on one side of that fence and you can't see traffic uh, approaching from the other side. So maybe, yeah. maybe tapering that down, maybe maybe a berm with some some uh, vegetation or something like that. If well, and are all the, is all the noise <coughs> generated from that uh, Turbine, the motor, the vacuum blower, or is it well, also it probably, the intake? It probably kicks up. It's probably a zoned motor that probably kicks up as each person turns on the vacuum. You want to see um, details what? about the blowers? Yeah, yeah. So if yeah, you've I got them all, if you've got them all being used at the same time, it probably increases the decibel level. I just wonder if there's a way to attenuate. If there's that turbine motor, even if it's in a below grade vault or something. Well, they have mufflers. I mean, my gosh, I know they, they have mufflers, mufflers for, but something obviously the noise is coming from somewhere above. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 No, that's a good point. It's adjacent to them. Put in the the dining room. Yeah, or, or, or put a sound attenuation barrier Baffle. around it. Or yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah, that's about 80. I guess was Constant. Yeah. <clears throat> Which 
Okay. Based on the conversation from the public hearing, would you like to see any additional locations be added to the noise assessment that they provided? For example, that increased uh, sound generation at point one next to uh, point one or point two, whichever it was. Southeast it's to corner. Southeast, corner. southeast corner was at that corner. And during the public hearing, <clears throat> perhaps it's something you could look at further into Royal Dynasty or I'm just based on the public hearing, do you want to see any additional locations tested that weren't provided? You know, not, not for nothing, but the reality is that as ambient noise increases and the whole area, that portion of the community gets busier, which is probably consistent with the time that the car wash gets busier, that's going to drown out some of the sound that you hear being generated from this facility. Sure. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, when you go out and you take ambient um, sound measurements from the site, it's it's a shot in the dark. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you get what you get uh, uh, on the day that you happen to go out there. Mm -hmm. right. That was something we noticed in the sound study was that a lot of the measured times that they projected there were, again, your peaks at week at week a.m., week, uh, week in the middle, p.m. and weekend time. Um, since the facility does obviously run until night, would you like to see times for that off-peak hour of noise? I know just to your point, Jim, it is kind of shot in the dark of what yeah, it might so be. It's but It's somewhat subjective. Um, yeah, I guess knowing the specs on the blowers would also kind of provide yeah. you with that too. Yeah, you know, and I think part of this is going to come down to um, whether or not they can show us reasonably that that the vehicles backing out of those last two spaces on the southeast corner um, are positively not going to conflict. I mean, I I use this facility myself a lot. So when you're when after you've been dried off, um, if it just so happens that you know, they tell you you're good, and three or four other people just got tapped out to drive away too. You know, you're all kind of vying for the one or two spaces in with with which to discharge onto the public highway. Well, I think the same thing holds true in a panorama. I use a panorama yep. one. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. people. Yeah. It's busy there. People pay attention. You just <coughs> gotta go I, mean, I don't know how many accidents. But we've only you know, they actually panorama. Have. We've got those two stations over there where they do detail. You know, yeah. um, right. glossing and stuff. Here they're talking about eighteen. You know, and stations outside. You know, so if they are, if they oh, are, if they are all free, road, so it's not difference. just those yeah. two points, Agreed. but it's also <clears throat> other people adjacent to them on the south end that could be backing out, trying to pull out at the same time. So it's, you know, it's a it's a potential bottleneck location. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going right, <clears throat> coming out of there right now, which they're going to close that exit down. If you're going to go right. Usually, you got to really take your time because you got people wanting to go out left. And they're trying to nose out there, and you're you're trying to nose out where you can see if there's no car coming so, westbound. So, all right, let's say you're the business owner. All of a sudden, you create the situation, and your customers are getting annoyed at you for a free service that you're providing. Don't you maybe modify it and stop it or before you, you lose customers? Or your friendly or you find out planning that board just, makes recommendations to. Uh, yeah. Go there. It's kind of leading to my next question is, <laughs> it's leading to my next question is, is the board comfortable with the proposed 32? 14 inside, 18 outside, based on what we've heard tonight? I'd, I'd like to see that striping plan okay. before I before I answer a question about the number of spaces. Sure. I think that's fair, but I mean, the overall concept, I think, is is good. They really could shift them, couldn't they? To the west? It's a question we can ask. Well, they've got their... Uh, There's parking they've spots They've got their, there, but their trash enclosures down there. Correct. But it's just but parking spots between there and the... Um, is that the turbine? If that's employee mm -hmm. parking, the employee mm -hmm. parking, if it was up where that 5C is and, you know, if that was up... It would eliminate a lot of that. They need those spots uh, already for zoning, right? Or no? 
No, know, I'm not saying get rid of the parking shift spots. The just shift, shift them. Because, okay, somebody comes to work, you know, instead of the, va the vacuum, let's say the guy sits there for a half hour, and that's yeah. potentially, you know, 16 a day in an eight hour day versus somebody on the shift who might, the car's going to sit there for eight hours. Well, the other thing that we didn't ask that, that we should ask is snow storage. Isn't it all pushed off to the rear of the site? Pushed yet? off to the west, isn't it? Well, you got more, you're taking up a little more space with additional impervious area on the new site here, on the, on the additional area. Plus, there's not a Almost whole all lot of that is impervious, the, yeah. the, the additional lands that they're acquiring. So that's a long way to push. Plus, so. you only have the one lane there, too. Yep. You, you have new traffic motions coming in through a bailout lane potentially when you need it. Obviously, you know, I can see a lot of people go through it regularly. So these eight spaces down here could be seasonal snow storage. <laughs> could be. Well, put, it probably, Charlie, put it in Charlie Wright Dell's parking lot. That is, that is a question. Good, good idea. That is a question we have asked uh, that wasn't on the plan originally. It was lot coverage. Uh, percentages uh, that's something that's going to get revised on the mm -hmm. plan so mm -hmm. I think that space? yeah that might yeah. factor into yeah. okay. the discussion right now as well okay what else and everybody okay with the architecture of the building yeah, yeah. this is this is the new model yeah, yeah. 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 Even Will they need any side variances, or is everything's everything's inside the building? It they'll looks need like, an, so they'll need an area variance. Be. They'll need an area variance for the monument sign that exists today, <coughs> because they're pushing it up from where the ten are proposed by the gas uh, pumps. Back here, anything overall site, inside. So there's a monument sign right where Mike's pointing to. Um, that's that has to get relocated by adding in those ten vacuum stations that are proposed. That gets it too close to the right way. Okay. It's also an area where they're adding new landscaping as well. Wasn't sure if the board wanted to review the landscaping or have a, a consultant take a look at the landscaping to kind of well, if you want to dress up. The front end of it, you are relatively close to Empire Boulevard, and mm -hmm. you're adding a lot of yeah, I think so. Transparent infrastructure. Get Bruce in it, yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. I mean. okay. What else we got? Any other variances needed? Mm. Look, at, we'll we'll see what lock coverage brings. Okay. Okay. Got a tabling motion. Uh, to table. Second. Burton. Hetsky? Aye. Bastion? Aye. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Tidy? Aye. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good sure, day. Sure, thank you. Thank you. Now, what else can we discuss before? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're out of time. Out of time, he says. We could talk about the picnic. I'm sorry. I just... <laughs> yeah. uh, well, thank you for waiting. Yeah, thanks for having me. I want to make sure you guys, the board, had time to discuss everything you presented. Um, can you pick it off? Yeah. All right. So, uh, for Pentonfield Square, it's our other tabled application from the July meeting uh, that we've been holding off talking about this evening. You received a number of updates uh, from the applicant. We have responses to your tabling resolution. Um, we have responses to the PRC memo. We have updated plans that engineering has started reviewing. We have um, updated elevations of the proposed buildings since we last spoke. Um, we also have landscape comments from our consultant regarding the question of what should we expect with the current landscape plan as proposed in terms of maturity of the plant species that are proposed. Uh, so we have a memo in there from him as well that we passed on to the applicant um, earlier today. So they need some time to review that just as the board does. Um, 
I would open up to the board to discuss whatever you feel is appropriate, what you're ready to discuss tonight. I think architecture is a big ticket item to just get some initial feedback from the board, um, some more detail as to what you may be in favor of, opposed to. Um, and initially we had the, our architectural consultant review this plan when it first came in um, at Sketch. He also reviewed it when it came back in for this application as well. His memo was updated uh, from that Sketch plan review. He asked that he offered the same suggestions from that original memo um, along with suggesting that more effort be made for some of the designs to complement or um, comply with a lot of the examples and guidelines that are shown in the mixed use manual. Um, basically up until this point the board's had some soak time to take a look at everything, see those memos, and I would open it up for <coughs> discussion. And any questions? Well, we're happy to help. Um, Jerry, I, go ahead. With, uh, <laughs> Appreciating the, the, uh, the fact that this is uh, somewhat of a moving target and the applicant's team is uh, uh, continuing to develop this process in part based on the feedback that they're getting from this board and, and the community at large. Um, you know, I, I agree generally with Chris's comments in terms of um, architectural continuity and I just, for the record, want to read um, a section from uh, the design standards and the mixed use development guideline um, <clears throat> under uh, chapter five, uh, item uh, six, which specifically states provide designs that are consistent in terms of building type, scale, density, and overall character. So uh, we have in front of us these these new renderings, um, which are, are much appreciated, much improved over what we had before. Um, but I think to Chris's point, there's, there's still a, uh, uh, a discontinuity, if you will, uh, in the scale and character of the different uh, building types uh, that are shown here. And something else uh, jumped out at me as I was going through this again last night. Um, uh, one of the things that we talk about, particularly on the uh, uh, pedestrian Main Street, if you will, is the site furnishing characteristics. And I see all these renderings and, and all the different potential uses, I believe, on the, on the last page. Um, so we've got examples of the public square and the food truck rodeo and the farmer's market, et cetera. Um, but I'm not seeing um, you know, the, the benches and the light ballards and you know, all of the things that are suggested in the guideline that mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm, I'm sure you plan on providing and, and I'm sure you've thought of, um, they, they just don't appear here. And at this point, all we have to go on as a board for um, recommendations to gain consensus amongst ourselves to approve this is you know, largely the graphics that you provide us. Um, at, at some point for this project to receive uh, uh, an approval resolution, um, it would in, in several instances make a condition that um, what you build be consistent with what you showed to the board in your renderings and your graphics. So, you know, those kinds of things, I think at this point, you know, going forward, those are some of the things that we need to see here and, and in the mixed use guidelines, you know, the, uh, the development manual specifically talks about um, elements that invite the public to walk their dog and stop and get a drink of water and, you know, throw their trash away and take a breather and, you know, visit with their neighbors and, and, uh, and you know, and be a community, um, uh, be a pedestrian friendly community. So um, I, th I think more than anything um, from from our perspective in approving potentially our first mixed use development, those things that the mixed use committee took the time to address are things that probably we should pay the closest attention to. Right. I would agree. Keep going. 
I'm, I'm reading my own notes right now. Okay. We want to scroll through some of the elevation changes that you that were submitted for your review today. Sure. Mike, could you could you have the building elevations? I know there are a few things that were updated. Um, so a couple things we see on the independent living. Um, some more contrasting colors that are offered uh, throughout the building there. And if we keep going down, um, the one I wanted to point out was the memory care wing along the road B. Uh, they've updated some of the <coughs> facade there. Mm -hmm. um, so road B is the western north-south road. Yes, the westernmost. Um, so, so if you look at this image, yes. Zach, um, this it really exemplifies kind of the discontinuity that you know we just talked about with respect to um, the architectural elements and the roof lines and the coloring and the shadow lines between the different uh, building types. So that. You know, seeing, being able to see each building in proximity to the other buildings, mm -hmm. um, I think really, yeah, really this kind of lays this out. Oh, these, these rendering certainly does help communicate that. Mm -hmm. But again, I know some, some changes have been made to those elevations just um, as this proceeds to get some feedback here. Um, I wanted to mention wayfinding too. Wayfinding. While we're on the topic of, of things that, you know, um, shouldn't be excluded from um, the uh, landscape architecture plans as they develop, um, because certainly they're very important to engage the community and where to go and, and what's going on and what features are available to them. I do have some building sample materials here tonight, too. Is that something you'd like to take a look at? Sure. Uh, or is there something before that you'd like to no, discuss? No, n n not really. I'm trying to get my head around the, uh, the overall proposed architecture and how is that you know, going to look in reality. And, <clears throat> you know, the the western part of that bridge, uh, you know, what are the materials in that? It, to me, it kind of looks like a office trailer elevated at the moment. But, you know, in reality, it might be totally different than Mm -hmm. I think it is. I think it's one of those Verde trailers. They're just, you know, but it kind of looks like that. Some windows. They, uh, <coughs> they previously mentioned the material. I just can't recall it. And ask for clarification. Yeah. Yeah. What? What is that? <coughs> That's a vertical board and batten siding. So it's ten inches and then a protrusion that sticks out. So it's for, yeah, vertical board and batten. So siding. You, you're proposing cedar. You're proposing a cementitious material. Uh, at this point, we're proposing a vinyl, a, board, a vertical vinyl board bed inside. Vinyl. Yeah, the, the logic that we have here, and I'd love to continue to hear what you're talking about, um, was that that piece is the background, and then the, the stone piece is the, the gateway that you walk through. That's the piece that we're focusing on. So <coughs> that uh, that section is meant to be downplayed because we want to upplay that's the, the, the gateway. But please, so, please continue. Are you concerned at all about um, what static electricity is going to do to that elevated facade with vinyl material on there and how particularly with a light color how that's going to kind of become discolored in a short period of time I'm not uh, really familiar with I guess what you're asking static electricity is uh, going to break it down oh um, no it just uh, you know vinyl conducts static electricity so Dirt particles and, and airborne particulate tend to cling to it. Um, clean, clean. As far as being clean. Yeah. I see. Yeah. I see. Right. 
you know, it tends to, um, you know, kind of darken um, uh, material. Um, and something like this that's, you know, exposed above and below probably would get a little more wind action and, you know. Gotcha. Yeah, that's something that we have to dirty, think about. It's going to look dirty in a short period of time. One of the reasons that these clay colors and gray colors are awesome. so popular. Yeah. The um, the independent living, that's also all that's all vinyl sided. Correct. With accents of stone and um, yeah, but the rest of it is uh, vinyl sided. Okay. So if I could offer something. Sure. Um, typically, when the board is reviewing something that's this advanced in architecture and building designs, um, in the past we put the applicant in touch with our architectural consultant so that they might have an opportunity to discuss these recommendations and. I think that's a good what idea. What they're proposing. Um, I know I've spent several meetings with, with Chris reviewing our manual, mm -hmm. so he has a good understanding of it. Um, is that something that you'd like us to suggest yes. to the applicant and see Probably. what see what so comes maybe, of that? So maybe we we give Chris a little room yeah. of guidance yeah. from the board and then absolutely I mean if, you know um, they might as well uh, have the opportunity to to advance it in a way that it's going to advance. They have mm -hmm. a more technical conversation amongst the design professionals. You know, we're, none of us are yeah. architects in our profession. Um, right. So, in, in speaking of that guidance, Jim, it, would you want would you like to start off with at least being supportive? And I think I heard you say this before, if I'm wrong, and other board members as well. Um, supportive of some of the suggestions and recommendations he made in his memo and kind of use that as a base? Yeah, you know, I, I think to Chris's point, you know, his, his initial comments were, were uh, you know, somewhat broad because the project was evolving. Right. Ooh, so definitely. June 1st, mm -hmm. we got a response back from the applicant. And then July 2nd, we got some revised comments from Chris, mm -hmm. um, who hasn't had benefit of seeing this yet. Um, so, you know, there's a little bit of back and forth here. Um, but I think generally, um, Chris is doing what he we asked him to do, take a look at the design manual and the architectural standards mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, the, the massing and the continuity and, and try to apply it to what he's seeing. And I, I agree with that. I mean, that's... That's what the town board voted to accept, right? Yeah, I mean, part part of his yeah. part of his overall message was, you know, looking for elements in their designs that, you know, can speak to some of Penfield's uh, history a little bit, but in a, I know what you're gonna say, <laughs> in more of a modern way and uh, an attractive way for make for new development. So I mean, he referenced, you know, the YMCA, for example. Does it have to look like that? No, but they blend brick, glass, and unique wood elements into their structure. Again, it makes it appealing. Now, that building is not mixed use, but it has, it, it goes, takes it to, uh, you know, another higher level of design. Here, I can tell you, you're talking about a community I can tell you, I setting. I remember when that project was approved, and there was a lot of public comment about how that architectural curb appeal didn't fit anything in the town of Penfield. Right. So I I don't necessarily think that the YMCA, as nice a looking building as it is, mm -hmm. um, and as well received as it is, would be representative of what I call the character of the town of Penfield. See. <clears throat> I don't totally disagree with you. But if, you know, as I look at this, and I, you know, if I'm them and I'm being given, hey, make it look representative of Penfield, well, 
It's tough. What does that what mean? What does that, that mean? It's tough. Yeah. And what are the, you know, what are the things that we should emulate, and what are the things that we should run away from? I don't think and that was I don't ever think well that defined. That's an easy problem in to the solve. mixed use I, development, and I think the examples that the committee put into the mixed use development guidelines are not they representative they of what I would call Penfield. They were examples from mixed built Other mixed, mixed use deals. developments that around the country. Yeah, yeah. that were kind so of more heavy. I mean, we're on the same page, AJ. It's but there's I mean, I, I, there's certain agriculture agriculture certain architectural styles that are prevalent in Western historic structures in Penfield and also Western New York. This is not a historic structure. It's not, but we're saying that pick up some of maybe some of those elements so maybe that's it's not, some that's not what this says it's saying history yeah. for the area but it doesn't say historic elements so I, I i think i know where you're going but i i don't think we want to give the applicants design team the impression that you know we're looking for federal style buildings here or something because that's not what this says so no but that's just one way one of the types of buildings it doesn't have to be federal um it can be you know there's other styles in penfield other styles in the region and i think some of those maybe are buildings that fit maybe more in what the mixed use guidelines were trying to capture well i i think we go back to what zach said we have a consultant we value his his opinion and his his uh, expertise, and I think we should give him some no, I agree. some broad I agree. guidelines and let him do his thing. <coughs> I don't think we should be dictating <coughs> architectural style to the design team. And those are just yeah suggestions. Yeah, broad I, broad suggestions. Yeah. Yep. I agree that we should we. We're really not qualified to dictate exactly. You know, we're in charge of making a decision on this, but I, you know, I'm not an architect. I know what I like and I know what I don't like, but you know, half the stuff I don't know what it's called. So, uh, um, I personally think the Y is one of the nicest buildings we have in town. So, I, I my opinion would be, hey, if we can extend that theme and tie other things into it, I'd be for that. Um, I also like the materials that they, that the wise seems like it's being built to last forever. Um, having Chris uh, weigh in is probably a very good idea uh, and, and once we get basis. to a point where we've got some continuity between the building styles and we're pleased with how that's evolved then we can do what we traditionally do take a look at color and texture and materials and things like that and and kind of pin down more of the details but i think there's there's a step that needs to take place in between Terry, you've done pretty well. I, I agree with Jim on that. And I'm not really, uh, from looking at this rendering here, I, I just don't want to make it too big. I mean, is this, is this the direction the town wants to go? Is, you know, like you four story the, units that high, big? Is well, that, I think the there's potentially a difference between, okay, four story and that looking that big. To me, right. To me, that building looks big because of, it is. The word is, you know, monolithic <laughs> or whatever. And it's going it to be it, big. It could, big. Couldn't it be made to look like more than one building, even though it is one building? I just, I, I'm. And is well, that, we have like the step back approach to building yeah. design, where it doesn't look like four static floors. You know, you you break up the facade, so. Yeah. Um, right. The way it, it has, that is, it that's has scary. To it. I'm looking at everything's that. almost <clears> on the same plane. Mm -hmm. Whereas, it's the scale of the if it was well. varied, I mean, the independent living compared to the memory care, yeah, 
Yeah, I just like to see that elevation. I think that's brought what, that's down just an initial like look at that. Profile, the building elevations and compare like the road and going back. I've mean, done it in the past for other things like hotels and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not yet. I don't know. Okay. I mean, four is, four is allowed in the district. We have, I mean, the code allows for a certain height. How that height is established and how it looks, that's an important element to your point, Terry. And in, and in fairness to these guys, this guideline really directs you to go up rather than out. Correct. This guideline is trying to avoid sprawl and create density that's on a smaller scale. And, I mean, from that standpoint, I totally agree with the guideline. I do too. I, I, that, when I was you know, this this is no small task. I mean, I, I don't I don't think that this is an easy thing, but we do have to get it right. Yeah, because it's in it's in the zone A, which is defined as higher density. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be high density. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> this let's. Kind of compartmentalize this. The memory care facility. Uh, you know, let's work from west to east. You want to see that, that? What are things you like and what are things you don't like? Scroll that elevation. You know, that's closest to the edge of the district, to the Wise property, <coughs> open space beyond. Yeah. A future you know. complete street. Yeah. Because we don't forget we have lot five in the back there, which they have explained back here is uh, in their in their responses that is being reserved for future development of mixed use, potentially uh, more vertical mixed use there, um, to make sure that they're still meeting their commercial uh, percentage requirements. Um, so this road is not. This isn't just the the backyard to it. You got to. A complete right, street that's going to be going down there. That's a a walkable, attractive environment. You know, we have to we have the pedestrian spine. We also have a complete street there, um, so there will be activity back there, especially actually in, significant activity. If lot five develops, um, the well, way it's the main thoroughfare to, through the, yeah. the district, yeah. there will be significant activity through there. Yeah, for sure. So to your point. Site plan, quick. Most recent. All the way. So your lot five is that wedge shape. Right. Which, you know, you have the ability to work with the Y and pick up some land to square it off or something in the future. If necessary. If necessary. If necessary. Again, you have the ability to go up. Don't need to go out. <coughs> So let's assume that one day that's a street of shops on the west side. Mm -hmm. On the east side you have the, um, the memory care facility. Right. Okay. Go back to the rendering. standard but it's nice you know it'll fit in over there fine okay so uh again obviously overall but we're getting chris lopez's input <laughs> yeah that building is set back from the road a bit as well mm -hmm. you know you have your street parking there sidewalks street trees lining it um <coughs> some proposed landscaping around it um you know, when you think about the setting you're picturing, AJ, with future development along Complete Street, with and this being in its location, um, you know, I'm trying to think of the right phrase for you guys to consider. Um, is there more elements here you'd want to see there on this building? 
you know, to your, you said a comment before, make it, I think, more interesting, make, make it interest me more or something when I'm walking up. Granted, you're walking to this site, to site you're visiting this site to visit a family member or a friend. Um, yeah, that's not you a don't have a commercial public, activity. Hey, so on, again, so yeah. maybe, so, right, so are there, maybe there's some creative landscaping you want to use there to, again, still make that part of the site uh, active and interesting to what may future, what future development might be looking at or being a part of. Can we look at another? Well, if you're okay with the building so far, um, and again, have Lopez take a look at it and offer his input, keep going that direction. Can we pull up a, another facility in Penfield that's similar? Um, I'm thinking oh, Aaron Manor behind Wegmans. Yeah. If we can do a 3D and look at the facade. Was there? They a road. They went and drove. Yeah. Focus on the loading dock. That's yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll swing around. AJ, I wanted Where's you to get the. <laughs> Where's Doug? <laughs> Call him. Well, let's, we'll, we'll, just, we'll walk down the we'll street. Listen to him, Mike. Jeez, uh, <laughs> I tell you. You were on a run, Mike. You were on a run. I, I'll give you that. I told you, AJ. Go, uh, <laughs> How about this? Oh yeah, look at that. It's the next well, it's the next. It's the side. You gotta go to You wanna go around to the front? The left, yeah. Oh um, that's, that's back Wagons behind Wagons. I don't think it matters. It's nope. predominantly brick. Right. Yeah. With no, siding in the gable ends. I want to see the the entrance? The entrance, yeah. That's on the east. Yeah. Southeast. There you go. The, Just the kind of the, the aspect or the view kind of reminded me of this building. Mm -hmm. oh, but yeah. For had, a built example, yeah. I don't know, to me a little bit more interest, maybe it's with the columns, with some of the things on the gables. Of course, the brick looks nice. I don't know. Mm -hmm. just. Just as a comparison. It's also a mix of one and two story, which is. And that's a mix of one and <laughs> yeah, two yeah, story in the, in the I back. think that adds to it. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see what Chris comes up with, and then we can talk about materials. Yeah. Do you want to look at the assisted, the, uh, assisted living promenade area or the public square or anything? Sure. Fun. You were starting with memory carriers. Yeah, I was going to go. Going. I was working my way east. You know, I'm annoying Jim right now, but that's the way it goes. <laughs> I got all the time in the world. So there's our main street from the uh, public square. Mm -hmm. Looking at that pedestrian spine that would travel in front of both these buildings, the commercial out parcel there in the front along with the assisted living with the bistro and cafe uh, as proposed in it, where you see the glass front on the lower level. I know, Jim, you spoke I, last time I, about concerns with, not concerns with, but with comments about the colors, color choices being a little dull, I believe. Oops, there's a bird up there. That's nice. <laughs> Trigger finger. <laughs> Roof look okay? Yeah. <laughs> a little pixelated. <laughs> Try to get an idea conceptually, not necessarily specifically, well, <clears throat> but conceptually. The do you like that vibe? Feel comfortable with that look? That that vibe that's being created, or is it something that's I don't, care for the, I don't care for the white. I, I, I think the white detracts from the, the, 
the softer color and texture around it. But I, I don't think my personal opinion should strike the project. Right. I, you know. Well, I agree, and I, I, I'm in the same boat. Uh, I personally like the, I think that that street is the most interesting part of the I think whole it should design. be. Mm -hmm. I think it should be. I think, really, if, if, if they do what, what this would direct them to do, then we've got something where the buildings aren't really the focal point of what people see from a curb appeal standpoint. When they drive down Route 250, you know, people should be commenting about the sense of community and the public square and and the the trees and the site furnishings and you know the the very small amount of uh, parking areas and all of those things that that the committee had in mind when they developed the guideline. So it looks like a community and there's a continuity of color and texture and flow from one building Draw to you another. In. You know, it looks like they were all designed to be part of a neighborhood. I see where you're going. Yep. Kind of what I envisioned. I think the word continuity is a good one, especially when you look at larger developments for mixed use. You know, well, that's, that, that's that kind of the outlying sense. statement yeah. in the guide. Yeah, and I do like that. That top view, you know, there's a lot of interest there. It's not, the front's not on a single plane. There's a lot, uh, you know, some muted and materials. Um, it's interesting. Um, and if it's landscaped nicely. And I think nicely, that's, that's a key. So, yeah. you know, working with the developer to get some mature trees in there and, and not get saplings that are going to take 10, 12 years to, yeah, just to give us that kind of look. Mm -hmm. Start with 25 foot trees. Well, I don't know about <laughs> that, but yeah. we'll fly them in. You know, maybe, maybe eight foot trees or so, yeah. you know, something more mature. You know. There are some, in, in that landscape memo that I mentioned earlier, there are some recommendations for uh, improvements on the landscape plan, so we'll see what that comes back with as well. Yeah, you could see raised planter areas or, you know. Well, and, and this is not, I, I don't want to compare this to another project that we had that showed a, a lot of very extensive mature landscaping and different facades that didn't turn out that way, but, um, you know, I think, I think it's important, and not just for us <coughs> as an approval agency, but for the public as well, you know, when they look at these, particularly if you go to that last page, Mike, um, <coughs> you know, that's what people are going to expect to see. Um, you know, they're, they're driven by these, these illustrations, mm -hmm. and, and I think to a large degree, we're driven as a mm -hmm. community yeah, for sure. to, by the illustrations. So, you know that I, I think Bruce is going to be challenged to uh, uh, to work with their design team to Chris well, Chris or Bruce, Bruce or Bruce. Bruce. Oh, that's cool. oh, oh Bruce on landscaping oh, that's on me yeah. sorry no. sorry but Chris can weigh in on the it's landscaping on too it's if he me. if he likes yeah yeah it's not going to be that way at day one but ten years out well you know I, I you'd want it to we look. have some control over that Bob yeah. so. see places in other parts of the country that it does look like that they were. Well, yeah. That said, they don't have the tax and hostile business environment that we have here in the Empire State. In some places, stuff you grows year-round. Year yeah. <laughs> no, no. Something that came up in the public hearing um, for this, and AJ, you brought this up, was um, kind of like treatments or how that public square gets built. And I know you brought up GeoGrid, for example, and, mm -hmm. and uh, Peter had re replied with that and saying that it's ten the grass tends to die in that because of how it's built. And so my, my thought <coughs> started running in my head. Are there any sort of hardscape features you'd like to see in the public square to make it more than grass? So that it kind of has more, nothing's year-round use here. That's reality. But 
to extend the seasonal use of the area, you know, if... See, I think we could have expanded on that idea that no we had before. So no. Uh, the geogrid blocks, um, yeah, they don't hold um, vegetation well, but that's okay um, because they can still provide some infiltration, water infiltration, as well as a place where you can set up for a concert or you know some other kind of an event mm -hmm. that doesn't ruin the grass that we have and maybe they can create some some quads in there with some kind of a uh, semi pervious surface that you could drive a vehicle on uh, you know uh, weather permitting and, and do some different things I mean I, you know yeah. I, I I like the idea that that they want to create a public square that's flexible enough to do a bunch of different things and I think we should encourage that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> My thought was just I think what I'm hearing too is well, how, how, how to maximize how to, it. How to maximize it, exactly. How to get them how to make it accessible and usable for as long as we can during the year. Well then maybe that maybe that's one of the components. Maybe there's some, you know, semi pervious yeah. surfaces within the public square mm -hmm. that is not an entire area of yeah. seed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Braid it and throw some grass seed down. The yeah, because at, at times of the year when, you know, everything's not greened right. um, and the weather's not with us, you, you don't want it to look like just a barren land. No, you, right. you could look at, you know, wider pathways in there or yeah. a, a concrete pad for Besides. something and then, you know, you offset that with rain gardens or the bioretention well, that, that they're would proposing. Help, that would help with some draining, drainage components as well. Yeah, so I think there's... In the middle of that. Again, we're not the ones to design it, but I think those elements might help this future picture to say, yeah, I can see programs <coughs> happening there. Um, early spring, late fall, you know, not just picture perfect, not a summer day, you know, because we know it likes to rain here. When it wants to, it likes to be dry too. But sometimes that space can also have other surface materials in there that allow it to be useful for everything. So I don't know if that's something you wanted us to have the applicant explore that um, as the plans continue to evolve. I'm, I'm thinking that we need to uh, give you and your colleagues some collective comments about things that we might want to ask our consultants to consider as they're working with the design team to advance yeah. this. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, I don't, I don't know that we're going to, you know, vet them all sitting here tonight. But no, no, I just didn't want to leave that one out there because from the meeting I didn't want to forget yeah. about it. No, no, that's a good point. You know, are there any similar places in Toronto, Michigan, Minneapolis? So why don't we ask the applicant you know, that if they can come up with? I know that there's that, some similar areas. You know, people to always this make the excuse, "Well, the weather's so bad here, you yeah. can't do anything, so we no, can't do anything." They have they and have a similar I climate. Just don't believe that that's and similar challenges, and uh, and maybe <coughs> they can maybe they can bring us a couple of. Uh, uh, mixed-use right. development um, aerial images that that might have some similarity to the size of the parcel we're looking at and the number of buildings. <clears throat> well, Chris definitely, he knows different parts of the country from mixed-use perspectives, would have been what has been done. So, mm -hmm. again, getting back to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, I think that's a good, good direction. What we want to get taken care of. I think that from this conversation, what I'm hearing is just getting the directive from the board to have staff um, get the applicant in touch with the architectural consultant to review his comments, to discuss alternatives to the designs, um, and continue our our technical site plan review that we're doing right now with the traffic study that came in with uh, the responses to the PRC memo um, 
continued work on the landscape plan based on Bruce's uh, round of comments here. Um, and <coughs> jump in if I'm missing something from what you guys said. <coughs> Well, one thing that came up uh, after the last hearing was overflow parking. So, I mean, with, if there's an event, yeah, where do people yeah, park? Remember, we talked about that. So, you know, the, the flexibility to do some different things, um, and you've got some elderly folks on site, and you know, mm -hmm. there might be events there where their families want to come and be with right. Grandpa and attend these functions and things. And, you know, what so do we, we do with Uber stuff? Or you know, something. What do we do with the overflow parking? Yeah. We're not giving them a parking spot. It's too valuable. There, I mean, shared parking will be uh, required as part of this with the YMCA. Well, we talked about yeah. that, but mm -hmm. we haven't, that hasn't been committed to paper as a. Right. No. No, but they do have, we do have a shared, we have a cross access and shared parking agreement in place currently when the Y did its expansion. So we have a legal document that leads into that shared parking environment. Um, we can review it a little more, um, but it's probably good It's good to have a response well, as to how it would be addressed in the event of. Yeah, and, and I think one of the things that came up uh, relative to um, using available parking at the Y to the extent that it's available. I mean, if you're talking about events on Saturday and Sunday, that those are the peak times for the Y. Yeah. But another thing is that, you know, you're talking about, you know, ambulatory people. So, you know, some people, you know, can't or won't park in that lot and walk all the way around to get to mm -hmm. visit Grandpa and then to go to the public square and, you know, do all those things, uh, you know. It, I just think we need to consider, you know, or ask the applicant to at least to consider, you know, what kind of, you know, traffic generation some of these events will uh, generate, and you know whether they've got a plan to accommodate them. So kind of look at what they, perhaps what <coughs> they have done, you know, from home leasing. And uh, Episcopal Senior Life, what type of programs they've done in the past where it's a large turnout and what parking they may need um, that well, they I could think, see that I they think could what see they're here. here is things that they haven't done before. Possible. <coughs> Possible. But Probably. to review the past, those, yeah. those, those events that us. they put on, and, you know, has there been a shortage in parking? How would you address the parking here for similar events here? Something to that nature. Yeah. All right. Um, anything else? Anything else? Terry? No, oh, good. Bob? I'm good. Take a vote the table um, to start those items we just looked through. <coughs> Get some more responses and continue our review of this. Somebody want to move it? So moved. I'll start. Hetsky? Aye. Bastian? Aye. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Tidy? Aye. And may I say, Mike, you did exactly the job. Aye. I was practicing all day. You'll be able to facilitate the coordination between the design team and Chris and Yes. So you'll do that. Yes. So that will get that established. Okay, great. One more thing before we close out, and it doesn't pertain to you guys. Thank you all for coming. I'll be in touch about the next steps. Um, we have given you a preliminary schedule for 2019. It's a requirement of us now since the calendar that the town puts out will be coming, will be issued in the fall, I think, and we go out to print pretty soon. Um, so we printed out uh, a schedule for you. One thing we highlighted was uh, February 14th. That was the second Thursday in February. However, it is Valentine's Day, and I know how much you all love your chocolate. It's a special day for you all. Um, is that a concern, and would you like us to look at the 7th for that, and then are there any other dates that jump out to you? 
as long as you call my wife and you tell her <coughs> that I exactly take, uh, I will not be I here on the 14th. Take her out to dinner because uh, <laughs> you're making me come to a public hearing. And I'm okay. With that. <laughs> I don't care. So the seventh is definitely better for me. So they won't, won't get romance left in their marriage. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm free to. I'm I free to. It's okay. <laughs> I, I got a little something to keep in my back pocket next to the time I see his wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do the seventh. <laughs> <laughs> so, sure, we're good with that. Wow. Good move, Mr. Chairman. Chairman. You never watch. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Tuesday night? No, it's uh, a Thursday. 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 It's the first Thursday, Thursday of the month, which is uncommon for us, but available as well. Okay. And then we'd still have the work session on the 28th, so we just have a gap between public hearing and work session meeting. Unless you want to do it on the 12th. Nah. Just keep that regular. Um, we need to do the 7th. Next month, the first meeting is on. Next month, September, September. sixth. We moved oh, it up. Yeah, right. We had to move right. it up because right. there's the election primary. Yes. The primary yeah. is, Thirteen. is the thirteenth. For the state of New York. Okay. All right. If there's anything <laughs> that that jumps out to you that we need to address for mainly a public hearing, um, let us know. We need to have this in by the end of the month to the rec department. I know. We haven't changed anything to the fall yet. We're still on schedule, and I don't know if any of your travel is going to oh. come up. I'm uh, probably not here, and I'm over at the end of it. Okay, just yeah, I already said it. I used to come on. Yep. There used to be. All right. Two. Um, that was the last item I had. Two of them. What do you need? For the built. Yeah, yeah, what do you want us to bring? Why don't we uh, talk about that? It's over there. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so adjourn. Thanks, everybody, for coming. We can only. And we'll see you uh, September 6th. Government agency.